Um, welcome uh, everybody again for this uh, third day of the school. Um, today we are going to have three speakers and uh, the first one is Matteo Marsili, who is a, a professor researcher here at uh, ICTP, who will give a, a tutorial on uh, stochastic processes. So I leave the floor to uh, Matteo. And before we start, just let me remind you uh, a couple of rules. So if you have questions, you can either post them uh, in the uh, chat uh, or you can raise the end with the uh, Zoom feature. Uh, and if you're following from YouTube, you can ask question by uh, posting the question on the YouTube chat and I'll uh, keep track of that. So please, Matteo, thanks for that. Okay, welcome uh, everybody. Uh, so in this, uh, this is a tutorial and uh, the idea of this tutorial is to give you an idea of how you introduce uh, stochastic effects uh, in um, um, theory and simulations of uh, individual based models. Okay, so going from uh, the ordinary differential equations that you have seen uh, uh, in uh, many uh, of the talks uh, to, um, to uh, models that also include stochastic effects. Okay, so, uh, uh, so the idea is, uh, say, this is uh, just an example of um, uh, some data from uh, epidemics uh, um, uh, this is, uh, I don't remember exactly what uh, the epidemics was, but as you can see, the dynamics of the number of infected in time is uh, not at all uh, a smooth function as you would get uh, from uh, the integration of uh, um, differential equations for populations. So, which means that uh, you have uh, to include uh, um, uh, other terms. Uh, so one, of course, is uh, uh, seasonality. Uh, so a term that depends uh, on uh, time explicitly. But the other one is also uh, what uh, I shall call generally noise. And uh, the idea of this lecture is to uh, discuss what type of noise and how this noise uh, comes about, okay? And uh, in particular, I'm going to discuss uh, uh, demographic noise. Okay, so if you take a, a simple model like uh, an SI model, then uh, these are the uh, uh, two uh, differential equations that you have. And generally, if you integrate these two uh, equations, you would get uh, just a continuous curve. But if you are interested in a, a model that is going on in a real population, then the increase uh, in the number of uh, uh, infected individual has to be an integer. So if you look closely at this curve, uh, it should be like a step function. And uh, uh, these uh, steps uh, corresponds to microscopic events uh, where uh, uh, a particular individual in the population get infected. Okay, because he bumps, uh, uh, is a susceptible individual, he bumps into an uh, infected individual, and uh, as a result, uh, he becomes, uh, uh, he or she becomes infected. Okay, so this is what we want to uh, describe. So, what we want to do is to uh, modify these equations of this model in order to take into account uh, uh, this uh, uh, discreteness and these uh, stochastic effect, uh, events. Okay, so um, let's start from the very simple, uh, simplest case. Let's look at just uh, one individual and let's imagine that uh, he may get uh, infected uh, in time um, uh, uh, with, a, with a rate uh, which is constant in time. So this probability RDT that a new individual will get infected in time interval uh, from t to t plus dt. And these events are independent. Okay, so uh, you can uh, represent this uh, on, a, 
on the line and, and these uh, events are represented by these uh, uh, star uh, symbols. And if you plot the number of individuals as uh, a function of time, then each time there is an event, uh, the number of individuals will increase by one. Okay, so um, how do, uh, how can one simulate this, uh, this event? Imagine you want to write a, a computer code that uh, um, uh, generates uh, this um, function i of t. Then one idea is to uh, fix uh, uh, a small uh, dt. And then uh, um, uh, for every interval with a probability uh, r dt, you will increase i of t by one. Okay, and you can uh, uh, do this for a particular interval t, t plus dt, and then uh, uh, you advance time uh, to t plus dt, you consider the next time interval, okay? And uh, um, for each interval, you should draw just a random number. And uh, uh, if this random number is less than r times dt, then you increase i by one, otherwise you don't. Okay, so um, now how should you choose uh, uh, this dt? So uh, the idea is uh, that um, uh, if, you, if you choose this dt uh, too large, uh, you may um, have that uh, uh, more than one individual gets infected uh, in, uh, in this time uh, uh, dt. So, uh, dt should be very, very small. But if dt is very, very small, then uh, your si uh, simulation uh, is going to be uh, very small, uh, very slow, okay? So the question is, can we find uh, uh, a more, uh, say, a smarter way uh, to simulate these problems, uh, to, to, to this, uh, uh, simulate this process? And the idea is to ask, uh, well, how much time, given that I have an event uh, at time t, how much time should I wait for the next event? Okay, so this is a little bit of math. So um, essentially, if uh, this uh, uh, P0 of t, t plus s is the probability that there is no event uh, that occurs in the interval between t and t plus s, then uh, because the, of time translation invariance, uh, so this uh, probability will only depend on S, uh, will be constant uh, uh, in T. It will be the same for every, uh, for every interval. So, uh, and this probability can be uh, written as the probability that the time that you have to wait uh, has to be larger than S, okay? So it will be the integral from S to infinity of the PDF of the probability density of this waiting time. And the next uh, uh, observation is that uh, if you ask this question for uh, two interval, consecutive intervals of length uh, S1 and S2, then it must be that the probability that you don't get infected uh, in an interval of length uh, S1 and S2 is the probability that you don't get infected uh, in the first interval times the probability that uh, you don't get infected in the second interval, okay? And this should be true for whatever is the size of the intervals. So this uh, requirement implies that this probability, which is a cumulative probability of this uh, waiting time distribution, must be an exponential, okay? Must be e to the minus r times s. And, uh, and then the PDF is just given by the derivative of this and it's uh, uh, the PDF of uh, the waiting time is just R e to the minus R times S, okay? So now we have this uh, uh, probability distribution. It is very easy to draw a random variable which has this probability distribution. It's uh, just given by this formula here where randa is a uniform random variable. And uh, so what you can do to simulate uh, your process is just to draw a random variable uh, uh, TW with uh, this uh, PDF, then uh, increase, uh, uh, 
your i of t by one, and then uh, advance time. And then uh, you can uh, repeat it uh, uh, in this way uh, many times, okay? Uh, this is uh, uh, a more efficient way of uh, simulating uh, this process because it requires you uh, to draw uh, fewer random uh, numbers and it's also exact, it's not uh, approximate. Okay, so uh, you can also uh, do the same simulation uh, uh, more efficiently with the larger uh, fixed DT. Uh, if you uh, um, observe that the probability to get uh, K events uh, in an interval uh, of length uh, uh, U is given uh, by the Poisson distribution, okay? So, um, and so in this case, essentially you can keep a DT fixed, draw the number of new infected from this distribution and then advance time by, uh, by U or by Tau essentially, okay? Okay, so um, this, uh, this, um, all this mathematics uh, that I've been describing is essentially what is called the Poisson process. And is a, uh, is, a, is, a, is a process that describes uh, um, uh, um, events that occur and that have no memory because essentially in every interval, you can have an event independently of whatever has happened uh, before. Okay, so um, now let's go back to our problem that is that of uh, simulating a, an, uh, a population model uh, like the SI model. Now, uh, uh, what happens is this is a little bit more complicated because uh, now we have uh, um, two population, the susceptible individuals and the infective, infected individuals. So there are two compartments in our model. So uh, we can say that uh, for every individual, sorry, uh, for every individual, there is a, a, a variable xi, which is either zero if he's uh, susceptible or one if he's uh, in infected. So um, and the model is, uh, say, uh, it's a model where uh, at each uh, um, time uh, interval, t, t plus dt, each susceptible can uh, become infected with a certain rate and each infected can become uh, uh, susceptible. So now what is the, um, uh, however, the, the, the important point is the rate at which a susceptible individual becomes infected depends on how many infected individuals are there how, how many um, susceptible individuals are there, and also on the state uh, of, uh, um, uh, of the individual. Of course, in order to be infected, uh, an individual has to be susceptible. In order to be, become susceptible, an individual has to be infected. So this rate generally depends uh, depend, uh, on uh, uh, the variables xi. So this makes uh, the simulation a little bit more complicated. But again, uh, you, you have uh, the, you can see that this simulation is a, um, a situation where you have N uh, Poisson process, which are, which interact with one another, okay? And uh, so let us see how we can uh, uh, deal with this uh, uh, situation. Okay, so imagine that we are at time t, e, and uh, then uh, uh, and the, the each individual, which is represented by a different uh, uh, line here, uh, is in a particular state x i, and um, at each time, uh, every uh, individual, uh, every each of these uh, states can change. Okay, so now we can use the idea that we developed before and uh, uh, we can uh, draw uh, waiting time 
from the exponential distribution and ask ourselves uh, when is it that uh, the state uh, of uh, uh, Mr. I will change, okay? And then uh, you can ask yourself, uh, what, is the, um, uh, what is the individual that will change next? Uh, this will be the one for which the waiting time for the next event is the smallest. Okay, and then uh, you can simulate this process by just uh, um, finding uh, what is the, who is the guy with the minimal waiting time. You draw waiting time for each of these uh, uh, persons. Then you find uh, uh, who is the guy with the minimal waiting time, and then you advance, uh, you, you uh, change the state of Mr. I star, and you advance time, okay? So this is uh, uh, exact. Um, you need uh, uh, to draw n uh, random variables, which is which are the waiting times for each of the individuals. But um, one, well, you can argue that when you um, when you perform uh, uh, the when you change the state of Mr. I you don't need uh, to redraw the waiting times for the uh, other people unless uh, their uh, state uh, has changed. And this is because uh, of the memoryless uh, property of uh, uh, the Poisson process. Okay, so can we uh, uh, do this simulation uh, even uh, better. So uh, the idea is that uh, essentially um, we can figure out what is the time that we have to wait uh, for the next event to occur, regardless of uh, which is the variable that will change this, uh, its state. So imagine that we are at time t and uh, where this violet uh, uh, guy changed the state. And then uh, at this point, uh, um, essentially, if we are interested in understanding uh, uh, which is the next event with, that will take place, then uh, uh, we don't need to keep the distinction between uh, uh, the different uh, individuals. We can just deal uh, with this as a single uh, uh, Poisson process. And, uh, and uh, and we can just find uh, what is the time that we will have to wait uh, for the next event uh, to occur in this combined uh, um, uh, Poisson process. Then once we find this time, we can also ask uh, who is the guy, uh, what is the probability that the guy that changed the state uh, is a particular guy, I star. Okay, and the way to do this uh, is, uh, uh, um, is simple, uh, well, the probability that the minimal time that you have to wait is larger than T is the probability that all the times uh, that you have to wait for the, the next events, the, the events on all uh, individuals are all larger than T. And because of this, because these are independent events, uh, then you can factorize this probability, then you know that all these are exponentials and then uh, you can compute directly the, what is the uh, probability that the next event will occur later than t. And this is e to the minus this uh, capital RT, where capital R is just the sum of all the rates, of all the individual rates. So um, you can just draw uh, a, a exponential uh, distribution, an exponential random variable, from uh, using this uh, uh, simple formula, okay? Then uh, the second step can be done easily because uh, if you ask yourself, what is the probability that the next guy that will change the state is Mr. I, then this is the probability that it's, uh, his or her, his waiting time is smaller than all the other waiting times. And you can compute this because this is just uh, the expected value on his waiting time that of the probability that all other waiting times are larger. And when you do this integral, you get a very simple answer, which is just the ratio of uh, the uh, rate of the process i 
divided by the capital R, which is the cumulative uh, rate or the, the, the rate for the whole population. Okay, so you see that uh, uh, if you, um, you can do a simulation very efficiently in this way uh, by uh, just drawing the time for the, when the next event will occur and then uh, uh, drawing which is the individual that uh, will change its state from this uh, probability distribution. And this way of uh, uh, simulating uh, processes like this is called the Gillespie algorithm. So if you go back to the uh, SI model, then um, here we are interested in two variables, the number of infected individuals, which is just the sum over i of all these random variable xi. And this is just and the number of uh, susceptible is just the total uh, population minus, minus i. So, and the rates are equal to uh, beta times the uh, probability that if I pick, uh, uh, if I meet a person at random, it will be infected. This is just i divided by n. And this is the rate for all the people uh, who are susceptible for which xi is equal to zero. And otherwise the rate to recover is just uh, mu. Okay, and uh, this is the rate that applies to all individuals whose state uh, is uh, infected. So uh, for which xi is equal to one. So essentially the prescription that uh, uh, I told you before is that um, if you want to simulate uh, the SI model at an individual level, you just draw uh, a waiting time for the next event from, uh, a, from an exponential distribution with this formula by drawing a random number, uh, uniform random number, taking the log and divided by R. And uh, where R, here is given by this uh, simple formula, it depends on i. And then uh, you draw i star from uh, um, the formula that I told you before. And, um, and this essentially corresponds to advancing time to Tw to, by Tw and to setting the number of infected individual uh, at time T plus Tw as uh, the number of infected individual at time t minus one with probability mu r divided by r. This is uh, the, um, uh, the probability that uh, um, uh, uh, yes, that, uh, sorry, this, I think uh, there should be a, a plus here. And um, uh, with, with probability, the probability that uh, I get an uh, um, um, infected uh, infection more uh, uh, should correspond to IT plus one, and otherwise IT decreases by one. Okay. So uh, if you write uh, a program, uh, then uh, this is uh, essentially uh, it's very easy to write a program, and then. Uh, uh, you can compare what is the uh, uh, difference between uh, the ordinary differential equation, the usual ordinary differential equation, which is the black line, and uh, the, the curve that you get uh, from uh, uh, this uh, stochastic simulation, which is the green one. And as you see, you get some uh, uh, stochastic uh, fluctuations. Okay, so uh, a couple of uh, questions, uh, a couple of uh, comments, if you don't have uh, questions. So one comment is, uh, uh, why can't I use uh, a finite DT uh, and use the fact that this is a Poisson process, so I know um, uh, how many events uh, uh, occur in a time DT in a Poisson process because it's given by the Poisson distribution, as I told you. Well, the problem is that uh, um, when an event occurs, this uh, changes the rate of other events uh, that can occur. Okay, so one cannot use uh, a finite uh, DT in this case. 
And um, so this uh, uh, way of simulating can also be uh, written down, so it can be uh, described mathematically by uh, what is called the master equation. And the master equation is, the, uh, is an equation for the probability of having uh, I individuals uh, uh, infected at time T. And uh, the idea of this master equation is that essentially you want to understand, if you want to understand how this probability changes in time, then uh, you have to consider uh, uh, what are the events uh, that uh, uh, contribute to increasing this probability. And these are the events where uh, either you have one less individual who is infected and then someone gets infected, and then you go from I minus one to I, or you get uh, I plus one uh, infected individuals and then uh, you get one of them uh, who recovers. Or otherwise you have uh, um, infected individuals and some of them uh, either uh, recovers or some other susceptible individual gets infected. So you go to I plus one. And notice that uh, here, these two terms that describe the transition from I to I plus one, I to I minus one, are proportional to the probability of having I individuals at time T and they have a minus sign because the probability then uh, decreases, okay? So, um, now, uh, of course, in a real uh, situation like uh, the one I told you before, there are other stochastic uh, events. In particular, uh, the rates uh, themselves depends on time. And, uh, and so uh, you should also uh, take uh, this into account. However, um, typically, uh, the, this does not change uh, much the way in which we have been uh, uh, doing uh, our simulation, uh, simply because uh, the, the rates, so the time, the typical time uh, over which uh, one event occur is of order one over the total population, uh, um, over the size of the total population. And you don't expect uh, rates uh, to change uh, that much uh, over such a short, uh, uh, such a short uh, 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 time um, interval. Okay, so essentially, uh, this Gillespie algorithm can be used also in the case where uh, um, there is uh, seasonality. Now, this is an interesting uh, uh, observation that has been made by um, Tom McCain and co-workers uh, 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 some time ago. And this has to do with uh, um, uh, the fact that you can get seasonality even uh, without uh, seasons. In the sense that if you look at this master equation, solution of this master equation for uh, um, System, systems, systems, uh, systems uh, uh, stationary state with a fixed point uh, and uh, essentially uh, whose deterministic uh, uh, evolution uh, would be very smooth. Then instead, if you uh, look at the finite uh, um, population size, uh, the evolution of a finite population, you find uh, these uh, large uh, stochastic uh, oscillations, okay? And this is just uh, a, a, an effect uh, which is entirely uh, due to the stochastic nature of the uh, system. And this has also been applied to uh, epidemics, uh, um, as you can see in this uh, plot, which is taken by uh, from this uh, paper uh, uh, where also Mercedes was involved. Okay, so um, I would pause here if there are questions because then uh, uh, I'm going to change a little bit subject. So I think, uh, Let's see yeah, how I think, uh, yes. Yes, you are in exactly as far as yep. yes, you are in exactly. alpha of the time. 
so it's perfect so i think it's a good uh, moment to stop and uh, see if there are questions from the uh, from the audience so if you have question please uh, use the raise hand or type it in the um, in the chat um, uh, Yes, please mod, unmute yourself and uh, ask. Hi, uh, I just tried to understand your uh, slides, the previous slide, when you show about stochastic. Yeah, yeah the previous one. Previ yeah, this one. So meaning that here we can see the this, uh, yeah, uh, that slide in picture. Yeah, that one. This one. Meaning that, yeah, okay. meaning that here we can see the discrepancy between prediction of the deterministic model and stochastic model, is it? Because yes. here you can see that the stochastic can predict like the solution with like some sort of periodic solution or cycle or something. But it seems like the deterministic part giving you stable state, right? That is what you are trying yes. to say. Exactly. Yes. And the reason is exactly. uh, because of the demographic stochasticity. Exactly. 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 Because you have uh, this. Uh, demographic stochasticity, you can have this uh, uh, oscillation. So this uh, is a property that uh, depends uh, crucially on uh, the Hessian of the, um, uh, of the uh, when you compute the, 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 the Hessian on the stationary state of the, um, um, of the model, okay, so so, but it's a, it's a, if you want to know more, I think uh, uh, it would be ideal if you go to these two references uh, uh, where the problem is discussed in detail. Okay. Hello? Yes, yes. Um, yeah. Mod, is it okay? Okay. Let's assume it is okay. There is a question uh, in the chat from Jordi um, who asks uh, Is the period of seasonality in the stochastic process the same as the period of the deterministic damping? Um, in this case here, uh, well, in this case here, I think um, uh, um, I, I, I cannot, uh, I don't recall exactly, so I would not like to make statements uh, that are not uh, exact. And um, but yeah, I, so so this is uh, essentially related. So indeed, uh, if you see uh, in these plots. Uh, the, uh, the dumping, uh, or if you look at the uh, period of uh, the um, uh, deterministic dynamics, uh, is pretty much uh, synchronized uh, with the period of the stochastic oscillations. So, um, so in, 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 in this sense, uh, these two things are uh, clearly related. And uh, and uh, as, I, as I told you, well, if you if you look at uh, the uh, fixed point condition, uh, then uh, and you look at the Hessian, then uh, um, um, the this periodicity here of the deterministic dynamics will be related to that, and uh, uh, this is the periodicity which is explored by this. Uh, uh, stochastic fluctuations in a, um, in a finite system. Uh, okay, there is another question by Solmas who is asking, in the method uh, of adding noise to the master equation, can we add noises with different distribution or different frequencies like pink or um, white noise? 
how can we change these kind of parameters in Gillespie algorithm? Okay, so the uh, so if you want to ask add uh, uh, so population noise uh, is uh, is given by uh, uh, by is a discrete noise and is um, is given by this uh, description uh, that I uh, gave you here. So if you want to add uh, other type of noise, uh, which is uh, exogenous noise. Then uh, um, this can uh, uh, this can so like a stochastic forcing uh, with a particular distribution. That of course uh, can be done, but uh, probably this is uh, more uh, uh, relevant. Uh, uh, so we, we can discuss this uh, better in the next uh, part of the lecture. Okay. Uh, there is. A... Oh, sorry. Ah, uh, Sabina, yes, if you want to ask a question, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, can I ask a question? Uh, I understand mathematically that there is an equation, uh, as you said before, that we can find the process which occurs next. Uh, but uh, what does it mean uh, ecologically? Like how uh, how we can translate that in what is happening. Like you can, it, the model can predict uh, how the distribution is gonna go in the future for the next time. I'm sorry if I don't explain myself uh, well. Oh no, yeah, so, so here, this is a model, say the stochastic, uh, the master equation. This is a model where you make uh, a very simple, uh, assumption on the dynamics of what is going on. Uh, you say that this is a model where uh, is a well mixed population of uh, infected and uh, susceptible, they uh, bump on each other and uh, you have this, uh, this uh, processes. And for this model under this condition, you can uh, compute uh, in this way, the probability distribution, if you are at time t, you can compute what will be the probability distribution at a later time, okay? Now, uh, the question is how, uh, how much this model uh, describe uh, a real uh, ecological, uh, real uh, system exactly. uh, ecology. And uh, this uh, uh, is something on which you will learn uh, um, across all the, oh, I mean, I think, this whole winter school is about that. Okay. Thank you. Um, I mean, the tutorial is just to give you a sense of uh, if you look into this model, what is the mathematics and what is the uh, what are the arguments that are um, um, that are on the basis of these models? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. There is, uh, if there is time, uh, yes, there is another, I will say, there is another question by Mod, so we can go ahead with that and then we, you can continue. Okay, thank you. Uh, I got another silly question for you. Uh, about that picture, right? When you got this divergence between uh, deterministic and stochastic prediction, it seems like the deterministic curve should be like of stable spiral path solution. Is it always the case? Can you get that? whenever you got like the stable note keys or something? No, no, you don't get it. Uh, so for example, uh, if you, uh, for example, for a simple uh, SI model uh, as the one I described, you, you don't get this, uh, this dynamics. Uh, you, you don't get this oscillation. So there are specific condition on the, on the rates, uh, on this rate uh, that, uh, make uh, this phenomenon possible, okay? And again, uh, if you are interested in this, uh, I really recommend you go through these uh, very nice uh, papers uh, that discuss this property in detail. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay. Great, I think- uh... Okay, let's go ahead. Okay, so now uh, what I would like to discuss uh, is uh, probably a more direct way 
of introducing a stochastic effect uh, into um, uh, the dynamics of uh, population dynamics uh, by adding uh, a term uh, directly uh, to the uh, deterministic equations, okay? So if you have uh, an equation, again, uh, for the SI model, uh, for the number of infected, uh, so this would be the deterministic dynamic. So, so what you can ask is, what is uh, the uh, term that I should add uh, to this model in order to account uh, for uh, population noise, okay? So, and, uh, so this is uh, essentially a subject that goes under the name of stochastic differential equations. And uh, the, the summary is, uh, if you want uh, the two line summary is that uh, the, uh, the effect of noise, you think about the effect of noise on a finite and small time window is the accumulation of many, many infinitesimally small events. So essentially the noise that you should consider can be considered as the sum of many, many random variables. So it is essentially described by the central limit theorem. And uh, because of this, uh, um, the noise, the type of noise that you should add to this uh, um, uh, stochastic differential equation cannot be anything, but it has a very specific mathematical form, which is essentially related to what is called the Wiener process, okay? And the main, uh, thing that you should uh, remember about this Wiener process uh, that I call W here is that uh, is different, it's differential. So the increment uh, in this uh, stochastic function over a small time interval dt is of the order square root dt, okay? And this is a very uh, important consequences uh, that uh, really are important to take into account when you want to simulate this process, okay? So let me go through this uh, in some detail, okay? So <clears throat> as I told you, what we want to do is to uh, take uh, a, a differential equation and add uh, noise to it, okay? In this case, I'm using this variable y, which is the fraction of infected individual in a population. Okay. <clears throat> So in order to give a meaning to this noise, essentially we should tell, um, well, uh, uh, how do I integrate this uh, stochastic uh, differential equation? So how do I get the value of the random variable y uh, from uh, at time t, from the variable at time t zero, when I integrate this stochastic differential equation uh, from t zero to t? Okay, so the first part is uh, uh, rather easy because this is just uh, a normal integral, but what is this integral of the noise? Okay. So now in order to describe this integral of the noise, you should really think about it uh, as, uh, 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 as what you would get uh, if you discretize the time interval between t0 and t, into uh, small intervals of size uh, dt, okay? So the number of intervals is of order t minus dt, uh, uh, t minus t zero divided by dt. <clears throat> and this sum is, uh, uh, is the sum on the contribution of this noise over this uh, small interval between uh, of size dt, okay? So now, Let's uh, think about what, uh, what should be the properties of this uh, random variable xi, which is the integral of the noise over a small uh, time interval of size dt. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, first of all, uh, if, uh, <clears throat> this, um, if we think uh, this, uh, these are, say, stochastic effects, then it's... Uh, um, uh, natural or reasonable to think that these are also independent and identically distributed because uh, um, uh, noise is uh, expected to represent something of which we don't know anything. 
And, um, and so if, it, if this is so, then the sum of these uh, small effects uh, is going to be uh, um, to obey the uh, central limit theorem. And so we know that this sum is going to be n times where n is the number of intervals times the expected value of this xi plus square root n times the variance times uh, Gaussian variable. Okay, where the PDF of this uh, uh, variable Z is a Gaussian. Okay, so um, in our case, I remind you that uh, N, the number of intervals or the number of sum of, of uh, uh, variables that we are summing here, it's inversely proportional to DT. And also uh, the expected value of these uh, increments because this is noise uh, is going to be zero. Okay, so now uh, if you look at this term here, and if you want a finite limit uh, when uh, dt goes to zero and n goes to infinity, then you should have uh, that the variance of this random variable xi divided by dt should be finite. Okay, because otherwise you don't get a finite limit. Okay, uh, sorry. Uh, so then, um, so this is what essentially defines the Wiener process. And uh, the idea is that uh, each of these uh, Xi, which is uh, the integral of the noise um, uh, over a small time interval dt that I call uh, dw should be proportional to the square root of dt times a Gaussian variable z, okay? And uh, so I want that if I integrate this noise over a time uh, uh, from t0 to t, then I get uh, uh, a sum uh, which uh, will, will be of the order of square root t minus t0 times a Gaussian variable z, okay? Okay, so uh, this is the first uh, lesson. So that uh, this uh, dw should be proportional to uh, square root dt. And this tells you that when you um, uh, uh, do a program and simulate this Wiener process, then uh, when you advance time, you should uh, uh, rescale things by square root uh, dt. Okay, or your, in, your increments uh, should always be of square root dt. So notice uh, here that uh, uh, this defines uh, a, a curve, uh, which is essentially this Wiener process, um, which, um, which, has a fine, which has a well defined limit when dt goes to zero. And this you can see graphically by the fact that uh, I have been running. Uh, this program uh, with two values of dt, which is 10 to the minus three and 10 to the minus four, from uh, time equals zero to one. And this is the function w of t that I've uh, observed, that I obtained. And you can see that, uh, uh, well, you cannot tell uh, which is which. Actually, I don't even remember which is which. Okay, which one was integrated with uh, a dt, which is 10 to the minus three, and which one was integrated with uh, dt, which is 10 to the minus four, okay? Okay, so, uh, <coughs> so the, the, the Wiener process, uh, which is this uh, uh, stochastic uh, uh, random uh, curve uh, is, uh, is a very interesting uh, object, mathematical object, and it has this process properties uh, that you can show that it is continuous, it is a continuous path. And uh, almost surely. And uh, also, it has uh, independent increments. If you look at what is the increment uh, of the linear uh, process in a time interval uh, and in a, another time interval that are not overlapping, then these are independent. And, um, and also, as I told you, the most important thing uh, that you have to remember is that uh, the uh, differential of this Wiener process is proportional to square root dt. And because of this, uh, uh, this is nowhere uh, differentiable. 
Okay, so uh, we get some creative uh, addition to the slides. So, okay, so now let's go back uh, to uh, stochastic differential equations. So what we have understood is that uh, if we have uh, a deterministic equation, which is the first part, dy is equal to a times dt, then the noise that we should add is uh, proportional to this uh, um, Wiener process or to the differential of this Wiener process. Well, B can be any function that also may depend on Y, okay? So now, uh, if I want to uh, define how, what is the solution of this equation, then I should tell you how you integrate, uh, uh, how you integrate it, okay? So, um, so in order to do this, uh, well, uh, uh, you have uh, um, uh, two parts. One uh, is uh, just a usual uh, integral, is a Lebesgue integral that you compute uh, with the usual uh, uh, rules, like uh, trapezoid rule or whatever you like. But the other one is, uh, is stochastic integral. It's an integral that also involves uh, uh, dw, okay? And so you can think, uh, well, okay, I will compute uh, this integral in the same way. So define uh, uh, a time uh, tau i discretized in, in many, many small uh, intervals. Define a time tau i uh, between, uh, uh, inside each of these intervals and just uh, evaluate uh, this function uh, at these points and then sum uh, this function uh, times dw and then uh, that's it, okay? However, uh, if you um, think a little bit more closely, then what you find out is that uh, uh, the value of this interval integral depends on how you choose uh, uh, the midpoint, okay? How you choose this uh, tau i. In particular, what you can see is that uh, if you look at this particular uh, integral, which is w, w dw between t0 and t, then uh, uh, you can uh, define it as uh, the limit as n goes to infinity of this uh, discretized sum. And if you take this tau i to be um, uh, alpha times the endpoint plus one minus alpha times the beginning of the interval, then uh, you, you get uh, that uh, the, the, the result actually depends on how you choose uh, the midpoint, uh, okay? So it depends on this alpha, okay? So uh, then in order to give a precise uh, meaning to these integrals, you have to uh, uh, specify how you choose these uh, alpha, how you do this, uh, uh, how you compute the integrals, okay? How you integrate differential equations, okay? And uh, uh, this is called a prescription, okay? And uh, the uh, most natural prescription is just to take uh, alpha equal to zero, which corresponds to what you do when you do uh, forward integration of uh, uh, stochastic, uh, of differential equations, okay? So, um, so the consequence of this is that uh, um, the, if, you, if you look at uh, uh, the differential, so uh, the rules that this, uh, 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 that this mathematics for integrals and differentiation uh, obey, a little bit strange because, uh, uh, for example, if you compute this integral here, you get one part, uh, which is what you would get uh, if you just integrate uh, uh, if w were a normal function, uh, which is just uh, this part here. But also you get a new part, uh, a new term here, which, uh, 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 which uh, which just comes from this uh, this prescription and the fact that W is a stochastic uh, uh, function. More precisely, it comes from the fact that uh, a DW 
is uh, uh, proportional to square root dt. Okay, so when you compute the differential of a function of w, then uh, this does not only contain, so this uh, differential should be f of w plus dw minus f of w. So this does not, you, you have to expand uh, f of uh, w plus dw to second order term, not to only first order term, because dw squared is equal to dt. And then you get also this, this term here, okay? So this is consequences for uh, um, how you deal with uh, uh, stochastic differential equations and how you change variables. And uh, because uh, uh, when you change variable, you have to always take into account that dw squared is equal to dt. And so there is another uh, deterministic term that comes out in your differential equation as a consequence of the stochastic term. Okay, so you can uh, do uh, um, uh, many uh, exercises, but uh, let me go back to the uh, SIS model. And so what this tells you, so for the SIS model, uh, you can derive a stochastic differential equation, which is, uh, um, uh, which is this uh, deterministic part. And then uh, uh, the stochastic part, the fact that uh, you have this uh, stochastic part can uh, uh, be derived from uh, looking at what should be the variance of the noise that you add here, okay? And, and the variance of the noise uh, for each uh, in, interval, um, you can see it as this form and depends on dt. So here you should put the square root of the variance of this term here, which is given by this, this object here. Okay, then uh, uh, essentially you can uh, run uh, uh, a simulation just integrating forward uh, this uh, stochastic differential equation. And again, uh, uh, what you get is a, is a path that uh, approximate the deterministic solution, but it has this uh, 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 population uh, noise added to it. Okay, and uh, now how you can relate these two things that I've been telling you uh, about population noise, the Poisson process uh, and uh, master equation and uh, the stochastic differential equation. Well, uh, there is one way of uh, uh, doing this, which is uh, rather natural and it's called the uh, fan campen system size uh, expansion. I don't think we have time to go through it, but essentially uh, what I want to tell you is that just uh, these two different, uh, what I've been telling you are not two different ways of, uh, um, two different stochastic uh, processes. It's the same stochastic processes discussed in two different ways, okay? Okay, so here are a couple of references to uh, which are uh, uh, rather accessible for uh, with a minimal um, uh, mathematical uh, um, say edu education. So, and uh, where you can find uh, all the things that I've been uh, um, telling you. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, thank you a lot, Matteo, for the very nice uh, tutorial. So I think we have uh, time for uh, a few questions. So there was one in the chat that I can start to ask by Prajual. I think you um, sort of answered that already. How does the stochastic prescription affect simulation? Does it even affect simulations? It does, it does. So if you, uh, because uh, say, just to make you, give you some intuition. Okay, so when, uh, um, so, okay, so sorry, uh, let me go back uh, to this point here. Uh, okay, so um, let's take this example here, okay. So you see, when uh, you take the expected value of this integral here, 
So if uh, DW, if, if tau i is computed at the beginning of the uh, interval, then DW and W are independent. If you take the expected value of this, uh, this is going to be zero. Is this clear? If instead uh, you take uh, uh, a, a midpoint, uh, which is uh, not the starting, uh, not, not the, be the beginning of the interval, you don't take uh, Ti as, uh, as, uh, as the tau i equal to uh, Ti minus one, sorry, which is uh, alpha equal to uh, uh, zero. Then uh, if you don't take uh, the, the, the starting point of the interval, then these two variables here, W and DW are not independent. And so when you take the expected value, this is not going to be zero. So when you integrate, uh, um, and, and so this means that uh, um, when you integrate uh, these um, stochastic differential equations, uh, so you know, when you have an integration, when you have a, um, a dif uh, when you have a normal uh, differential equation, you can choose uh, any midpoint you want. Okay, you can have uh, say implicit methods uh, where uh, you essentially um, uh, solve this. Um, uh, where, where, when where essentially here you you estimate. Uh, your function x of t at the end of the interval. So this becomes an implicit equation, et cetera, et cetera. So, and for normal uh, differential equation, this makes no difference, okay? It only changes the accuracy. It can only affect the accuracy with which uh, uh, you, uh, you can integrate this equation, I mean, uh, so. But if you have stochastic differential equation, instead, uh, you should be very careful how you choose the midpoint, how you integrate this, uh, this equation. So the idea of the Ito prescription is that the noise is in, at time t is independent uh, of x at time t, okay? Is, a, is, a, is an effect which is, uh, um, uh, which is, yeah, it's independent of, uh, of what was developed. Is this clear? Yes, that part is clear. But uh, my question more uh, was along, how does it show in simulation? How does this prescription show up in simulation? Ah, like, it, it uh, shows in this way. So say, for example, uh, if you, um, yeah, so, so when, you, when you have a stochastic differential equation like uh, this one, uh, if you take alpha equal to C, then you integrate it, uh, you would get, uh, um, you, you, I mean, you would get a contribution which is like uh, this one. Say, for example, if you take alpha equal to one half, uh, alpha equal to one half corresponds to a difference prescription which is called uh, Stratonovic, okay? then uh, these other prescri prescription is such that uh, uh, you don't have this other term here, okay? You don't have this second term here, okay? And so the rule that you apply to stochastic differential equations are the same as the rule that apply to uh, differential equations, okay? But, um, and, 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 and so the results are completely different. Also, if you do, um, uh, numerical simulations, uh, the results are, uh, well, not completely, but they are different. Okay. Okay. So this is definitely something you should care about. You should be always specific about uh, what prescription you are using when you are dealing with a stochastic differential equation. And I tell you this because also in uh, in papers uh, that you uh, that you can read, uh, uh, this is not always specified. Okay, but if you want your result to be reproducible, you should say what is the prescription that you are using in a stochastic differential equation.
Great. So there are a couple of more questions in the chat. Uh, so I think we have five minutes more to leave like a, a few minutes for a break. Um, so next question from Zored. Uh, can we study bifurcation in a stochastic model? Uh, yes, of course. Um, so uh, <laughs> now bifurcation, uh, so you, you, you always uh, uh, think of, uh, so if you think uh, at a say, discrete map, uh, then uh, this is uh, like, I don't know, um, uh, Hanon map or the logistic map, then uh, you can add noise uh, in uh, different ways. But then if you look at, at uh, uh, like uh, something like a uh, Lorentz uh, system, um, where you have uh, stochastic, where you have differential equations, couple differential equations, then uh, you can also add uh, uh, stochastic noise to that. And, um, and see, and I think there are many people that have uh, studied these problems. Yes. Great. Um, there is another question about uh, multiplicative noise by uh, Gianluca, who asks Are there models for which the stochastic differential equation involve a noise term that depends on the state of the system at that time? Say, uh, dw depends on x at time t. Yes, so typically uh, you, you, you do this by saying that, uh, well, DW is always uh, an independent, increment, at least in the ETO prescription. So DW is always uh, uh, the differential of the final process. What depends on X at time T is the, um, is the variance of the noise, is uh, B of X and of xt, okay. So, um, so this is the way in which uh, you can uh, uh, build uh, this uh, dependence of x and t of uh, of the of the noise term on uh, on the state of the system. Okay. Um, great. So, uh, is there any other question? I have, I have a question. Yes, please. Uh, you mentioned that if the paper does not, uh, say what alpha they, they use, it's not reproducible, but then I was wondering if I can reverse engineer and given a solution or some, some characteristics of the solution. I can find what alpha or or make a or maybe a distribution of of probability of al alphas they use. Yeah. So let's say um, yes, you can uh, uh, in many cases infer what is the prescription that uh, has been used. Uh, also, because uh, uh, different communities uh, typically use uh, different prescriptions. So. Um, say in theoretical physics, uh, uh, many people uh, use uh, Stratonovich uh, prescription, and uh, whereas, for example, in uh, I think in epidemiology, the natural prescription is uh, more the ETO prescription. But yes, I mean uh, the. Um, it should be possible to, to, to figure out what is the prescription used. But I mean, when you write a paper, you should uh, ensure that your uh, results are reproducible. So you should state what is the prescription, essentially. It's on, yeah, it's on the, um, uh, it's on the side of the authors to, to specify this. Great. So uh, I think uh, uh, it's time to um, uh, take a short break before the next uh, um, 
tutorial. So uh, thanks a lot, Matteo, again for this very nice introduction. And uh, this is uh, um, all this introduction is available on YouTube. So again, you can go back and uh, rewatch this lecture, this tutorial as many times as you want. So um, uh, thank you very much. So now we're going to take this small break and.